Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we start this presentation with a disclaimer. If you have IoT devices, probably after this presentation, you're not going to use them. So if you want to enjoy using them, maybe you leave. And if you continue and you decide to use them, then we won't judge you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> So, in fact, 22 billion of Internet of Things devices are currently used for smart speakers, to cameras, even your fridge can be connected to the Internet nowadays. And with great comfortable for the user comes a lot of security and privacy threats. So using the most advanced IoT tasks in the world, here at UCL, we limit these threats. Imagine you're using your favorite smart speakers. Mm, this, the data from your voice, so your voice is basically traveling to the internet and going to some servers overseas with privacy regulations, a different jurisdiction make it hard to control your data. So your data are controlled by these devices. And this process is completely transparent to the users. It's not easy for the user to know where the data is going and to whom, and what information is sent. Right? We have regulations here in UK, in Europe, but these kind of regulations sometimes are not available overseas. So for building the systems and try to understand a little bit better what are the privacy and security risks with the connected devices, smart devices, we built two IoT taskbeds, one in the time floor here at UCL in the Roberts building, and the other one in Northeastern um, University in Boston. So the one in Northeastern is better, but we are nicer, but we're working on it. <laughs> and we control these devices remotely, so we are able to sniff all the traffic from these devices and do automated experiments on these devices. And the first results that we had is that the majority of the traffic from the UK lab is not going to Europe or UK, but it's going overseas, like US, of China, different privacy jurisdiction, just to be, to be um, sure. And then we also find the cases of unexpected behavior, like for example, doorbells, they were activating, um, even uh, each motion, even if we didn't enable this in the app, we were ca there were cases in which televisions were contacting third party services without even having an account for that third party services in our case. And smart speakers constantly misactivating, so activating even if you're not saying the wake words. We did a study particularly on smart speakers to see if they were misactivating uh, on purpose. Like for example, when I'm saying words like I want to buy, or I'm interested in these things. But actually we discovered that we're misactivating only when the wake word is very similar. So the, the, wake, the, the words we are saying is very similar to the wake words. Like for example, instead of Alexa, you say, I like Star Trek. But still, this is a privacy risk because the user doesn't know that the conversation is recorded and sometimes the conversation can arrive to be even like 20 until 20 seconds. Right? And then your voice and your recording personal conversation is going to this big tech servers. We also find another case that probably every, everyone at home has a smart television nowadays, right? But what probably you don't know, nowadays televisions, they use a new technology that is called automated content recognition. This is so new because it went out literally in October last year. And uh, the major brands are using them, so LG, Samsung, what they do, they take screenshots of what you're watching and then do a sort of fingerprinting against well-known database for understanding the content that you are watching. And this technology works for any kind of content you are watching, not just the television that is streamed to the channel of Samsung, of LG, but we discovered that this is, so through like a set of experiments, we discovered that this is happening even when your devices is connected through HDMI. So you are like, for example, projecting something in the televisions, screenshots of what you are projecting are taken every three milliseconds, and then all the processing is done on the television itself and sent to the ACR content recognition server. So we call this second party tracking, right? And the thing is that, the funny thing, is that you can opt out for this in the television if you only knew that basically this is happening, right? Because basically this is activated by default in your television. You can opt out for it, 
But if you don't upset the privacy policy, you cannot use the television. So <laughs> this is funny. And this is why we invited in our lab the Information Commission officer. So they came, they are opening an basically investigation on this stuff and contacting LG and Samsung for understanding what is going on. But even internationally, we are in contact with the Italian Data Protection Authority and try to see if we can regulate it, this space. So nowadays, luckily for you, for me, we have some um, commercial solutions that you can buy. You can add this commercial solution in your home and they will filter all the traffic for you. They will take care of security and privacy of IoT devices. They do device detection. They do a security, privacy, vulnerability assessment. And you have many of these. Some, some of them are very expensive. They are from McAfee or well-known security solutions, Bitdefender, et cetera. You can even pay until 500 uh, per year for having this kind of services. So you sell them in your home and you think that you are secure and protected, right? But because we are researchers, we don't really trust them. So what we did, we bought them, we bought 10 of these security solutions and started to test them against very common security and privacy vulnerabilities. So we tested from anomalous behavior, open port, weak password, device quarantine, DOS attacks, but also privacy vulnerabilities like personal identifiable information exposure of unencrypted traffic. So everything that in their web page they claim to do. And what we discovered is that for the majority of the time, only three out of 14 threats are detected, even if those threats are like advertised in their web page. So after this, what we did, we'd like talk to them and say, look, the things you're, you're selling it actually didn't work. And they say, oh, thank you very much. Can we collaborate <laughs> on making this one better? So basically, this was a paper upsetted in one of the top security conferences last year. So we discovered that the majority of the destinations contacted by these devices are not only going, so the, the traffic, the connection, the, your data are not only going, it's not only going to overseas, but also the majority of the destinations from these devices are not first party and not even support party, are third party, so tracking and advertisements. And what is the problem in this case, right? The main problem is not that some random company in California has your data, but is knowing everything about you Having like your voice, your sensation, your emotions, they can build a unique profile for you and then influence everything about you. Having your data today can influence even your behavior in the future of your grandchildren. So the problem is this mass influencing, right? Problem. So things about Cambridge Analytica. So what, what we can do? In our lab, now that we know what the problem is, is we are developing some systems for understanding in real time security and privacy issues with these devices. One of the system, one of the many systems we are developing is called Energy IoT. So this system allows us to know what kind of attacks are running in our devices in a given moment just looking at energy consumed. So here is as some example of the power consume with respect to the natural traffic when an attack is running. And as you can see, there is a high correlation between the attacks. In this case, it's DOS attacks. So it's like this generate a lot of energy consumed. But we are also testing other kind of attacks. So this system we run in your smart meters and basically how the energy provider of the user to know when an attack is running just without doing any kind of deep packet inspection, but just looking at the energy consumed. Another main problem that we are studying in our lab is about medical IoT devices. So it's, it's fine when a smart speaker is act right? I mean, it's not fine, but you are not gonna die. But when one of these devices is like attached to your body and is controlling, let's say, your insulin level because it's connected also to an insulin pump, then if someone can act these devices, can kill you, right? So we discovered that this is possible. <laughs> we bought many medical devices, including like glucose sensor, and we discovered that they are using, most of the time, Bluetooth low energy 
and we are able to hack the devices and not only sniffing the traffic from the sensor that is going to the insulin pump, but also changing the value from the sensor to the insulin pump. So you can basically kill someone being in 20, 20 meters away from them. And uh, yeah, I have also a funny story about this. So one of the students that is working on this went to a coffee place last week with the, with the laptop and this Bluetooth sensor and met someone with the glucosio sensor, a lady, and say, hello, how are you? Can you hack? Can I hack your device? And, and she was like, uh, what do you mean? Uh, I can see all the data from, uh, if you want, obviously, I can see all the data from your sensor. And she said, okay, show me. So he was able to basically show to her all the data just being in the same room. This is crazy, right? So how can we solve this? Obviously, we can solve this by producing security and privacy solutions, but there is another big thing here that we need to think about, that is regulations. So nowadays, we have already some privacy regulations. One is GDPR. How many of you think that GDPR failed? Uh, me. Uh, so <laughs> we will have other security guidelines uh, one of these is from the Cyber Resilience Act that will come out in 2026. So all the devices, new digital devices that are coming to the market will need to be certified before being selling, okay? As like any kind of devices that is respecting privacy rules, we need to have these 40 pages of privacy policies that nobody, nobody read. So we want to help with this and we are building a system that allow you in real time not only to produce a certification for your device, but also auditing the devices in real time in the home router. So how this system work? So we take the security guidelines, they usually are made by lawyers, so very difficult to decode for us as engineers, right? And then we convert this in something that we can measure by looking at the network traffic in real time in the home router. We are already testing some of the guidelines, for example, number of non-user port, number of recognized protocols, and compliant with GDPR. And you can see by looking at just some of the devices we have in the lab, the majority of them are not compliant. An example of how we can use technology for understanding compliance is this kind of attacks that we produce, the reply attacks. A reply attack is like a kind of attack in which you're sniffing, sniffing natural traffic uh, packets, and then what you do, you just replay the packets. In this case, the devices shouldn't work because they, they should have a sort of security protocol in place that doesn't allow you to do replay attacks. But this is, doesn't work for the majority of the devices that we have, so the green tick is the ones for which we were able to do reply attacks, right? And usually what we do when we discover some of this vulnerability, we contact the manufacturer. So one of the manufacturer in this case that was vulnerable to, re to reply attack was TP-Link. How many of you have a TP-Link plug at home? Like, just switch it off. So, <laughs> so basically, in, no, now you can use it because in like two days they did a like software upgrade and then they upgrade the millions of TP-Link plugs that they have. But I think they just ate us now when you see other wall. Uh, <laughs> and we also have a system that allow the user to visualize all the traffic from these devices. This is a software that runs on the home router and it's called Utream. And using machine learning, we are able to understand what are the essential destinations for the device to work and the destinations that are non-essential. It's a sort of app blocker for IoT devices. Same things that is running in the browser, but for the home router and from, for IoT devices. So what's next? Many things. So uh, first of all, we want to improve these solutions at the edge. Not just considering the consumer IoT devices, but also more medical devices, collaborating with the NHS and also the HMR MRA for understanding if these devices can be certified better. And also industrial IoT devices, smart cities. We are also like working with policymakers for creating a privacy and security certification system in which these devices will, will have basically a label, a QR code in the package that can be scanned for the user 
and then it will be redirected to a database in which all the security and privacy vulnerability will be listed, similar to what happened with the energy uh, certification label nowadays, right? But this is, will be for security and privacy. This is not only my work, this is like um, part of the work. The majority of the work is done by the, my amazing students, so Gianluca, Andrew, Savas, Bara and Mohamed. Thank you if you're there. And thank you very much for your attention. Ta happy to take any questions. Thank you. So if anyone's not too busy thinking about what devices they're turning off as soon as they get home, do we have any questions? Thank you very much, Anna Maria. Um, I was wondering, so the system you described that could monitor the traffic uh, at home, uh, what kind of hardware do we need for that? Do we necessarily need a network assisted network for that or NAS system for that? Or? Yeah, so um, this can be implemented in two ways, right? Directly on the home router if your home router support OpenWRT, that is an operating system open source for routers, and the majority of the commercial routers they do. We also talk a lot with uh, inter-service providers, so we talk with BT and other providers, and nowadays the home router are becoming smarter and smarter, so they have the possibility to upgrade software directly remotely using Docker containers. So our system was tested in commercial routers and works well, let's say, if you have a decent, decent um, mag, um, kind of RAM, uh, but it will be able also in the future to work with Docker containers. So you don't really need the special hardware as soon as you support OpenWRT. Yes. Thank you. I'm curious how you're translating the policy work into metrics. Could you say a little bit what are the metrics you're using? Yeah, so I can tell you that just for translating one guidelines, we wrote a paper, basically. So it, it depends on the kind of guidelines. We also had like a um, seminar of three days talking to lawyers of like regulators for understanding what they meant in that in that, in that uh, regulations. It's not easy. From some, for some of the guidelines, some of the guidelines can be translated, can be measured live in the home router, but some of them you cannot really do it. I will say that 60% of the guidelines we were able to translate them. Um, but it depends from guideline to guideline. There is no general rule. You, we have time for one more question if there is one. Um, is there actually an industrial body for accreditation things for any of these devices? Uh, in UK, we have the IoT Security Foundation. Um, there are many regulators, like for example, in Europe, you have the INISA, uh, that is the sort of cybersecurity agency in general, but they have a new, they have a new regulation guidelines just for IoT. And in the UK, the government um, puts out in 2018 a sort of um, regulations of guidelines of how consumer IoT should behave. There is no specific, there are many working groups, like IETF as the IoT working group, RIPE as the IoT working group. And do they run these sorts of tests already, or is this something that needs, they, need, they, need, they need to do? Uh, what do you mean exactly? So are, are they running these sorts of security tests you do here? Do they do that as part of the... Ah, process? you mean if there is a certification body? Yeah. Ah, no. At the moment, at the moment there is no certification body. In fact, one of the uh, big discussions about these new regulations coming up is that who is going to do the certification, right? And I was proposing that uh, uh, when I was talking with the Information Commission Officer of Ofcom of the Italian Data Protection Authority that this should be like a third party certificator that should be certified by uh, the government, basically. So in my opinion, a third party certificator, you, in my opinion, we will see in the future many third party certificators that will be certified by the government. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Anna Maria.